Ever wondered what comedians do when they're not competing for colourful badges? Well, wonder no more. We did an episode of QI, and we, they wanted basically that, what's the most embarrassing story or something. That, and I told a story about getting caught short on Hampstead Heath and having to shit under a tree. And then when I went to get to raise myself up from my squatting position, losing my balance, I'm not going to go into any more detail. And then people did things like, oh, some, oh, oh my pen spilt some ink once on my jeans. I said, oh, what are you doing? I've really put myself on yeah. the line here on BBC. Saw myself in the public place. They did you yeah. dirty? That's not. That's and not. And then they work. just left me hanging. I've got, I've got some embarrassing stories. I had the signals off a guy, and leaned in for a kiss, and he retreated and said, "What are you doing? Brutal." That, you know, I, you I know could, what? Dude, what an idiot. That's less embarrassing than your behalf. And just rude on his part. Rude. And it's he, just I, rude, bro. I didn't misread the signals. No, he's just being rude. He's being rude. So I've had going to kiss someone and a similar thing, and they they went like this. Oh no. <gasps> Is it because she didn't have her glasses on? No, she's driving a bus. <laughs> <laughs> I went to an undertaker's because it was next door to the barbers and I thought I'd gone into the barbers and I went in there thinking it was the barbers. And the undertaker asked me, genuinely asked me, can I help you? And I asked him if he had many waiting at the moment. Stop. Oh. And he's an undertaker and he doesn't know why I'm asking that. Yeah. And he's like, you are? It's like he's stalking oh. care homes. <laughs> got four in the back. Yeah. <laughs> got a big fridge. Oh, you see, that's what... Yeah. That's bad. Until I had to say, is this not the barbers? And he didn't know it's the undertakers. I went home and I'll get my hair cut. Oh, just... I bet he still tells that story. Yeah, yeah. When, the, when I had to shove this blind fella out of the room before... Have you ever used it, though, to get out of stuff? Yeah, I was at an airport once, and my wife was in the, um, in the, in the shop and I, I heard the announcement announcing my name. We'd got the times wrong for the takeoff and the gate. And we had to leg it, and we got to the desk. The woman said, no, it's too late, because it was a bus going to the plane. She said, no, it's too late, I'm afraid it's gone. And I have me, I have me white stick in me, and <laughs> I don't usually play the card, but I went, I got lost. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she just stopped, she went, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> You've got, to, you've got to do it in your oh, son's bro. hands. You've I got to <laughs> that card every day, innit? Every yeah. day. Yeah. Worst holiday. I was once stuck in a field with five other comedians and having to <laughs> groom a goat. I remember that one. I don't know, rough holiday, innit? <laughs> rough. We've all had holidays like that. <laughs> I went to Tunisia once mm. and the waiter took against me. The waiter? Yeah. I, I complained about him and they moved me. And the new guy was trying to be really nice. He said, so, sorry, don't worry about him, he goes. You're with me now, as if everything was going to be fine. I said, what's the soup? And he said, what soup do you like? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I don't eat any meat. I don't want any meat. He says, none of our soup has meat in, sir, except our special meat soup. And I said, well, I won't have that. I'll have the one without the meat. And he brought me some soup that had loads of meat in it. <laughs> floating about. It's funny, isn't it? And he said, it's only small pieces. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, isn't it? We went um, to Morocco, actually. Now, I'd not long been with my now husband. My daughter was 10. It was our first holiday sort of together. But going to Morocco, my husband's bright red hair, bright red beard. Everyone in Morocco lost their mind. Everyone would go, Alibaba, Alibaba, like this to him. They go, what's your name, my friend, Alibaba? And my husband's Alistair, so he's Ali. So he went, Ali, my son's called Ali. You know, they loved him. And then all the restaurants giving out, they'd give them roses. They'd give roses and get you in, and when you're leaving, all that sort of thing, where we were staying. And then my daughter's Rose, so they were like... Then we could see the same guy every night trying to get us into his restaurant. And he... I've never felt so insignificant. So it was a great holiday. He goes, he goes Alibaba! He goes, Rose! He goes, hey. <laughs> That's what I got. I was like, he never <laughs> let one know, he didn't even care. My Rose, she, my eldest, she's got a nut allergy. So we come to the dessert and we get this ice cream, three colour ice cream. No nuts, fantastic. You know, vanilla and it's strawberry and what we thought was mint, fantastic. She takes one bite, 
it's pistachio. So she has this reaction. Oh, I'm belting it back to the hotel to sort out her reaction and everything, giving her the antihistamine, she was fine. Ali seems to have taken ages. I'm fuming, like this, and he finally comes back. I said, what was the bill? Did they let us off the bill? Like, because I was so, no, 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 no. I said, well, not even the desserts? They didn't take the desserts off? I was so mad. And he goes, no, no, they didn't take the desserts off. I said, Dad, why didn't they take the desserts off? He goes, oh, I ate all of them. <laughs> Alibaba, Maybe the, Alibaba. The ginger king of Morocco. Ginger king yeah. of Morocco. Pistachio the, ice cream is really nice. Really nice. nice. <laughs> and he ate all the <laughs> other desserts. And I just thought, nice. you, he was like a kid. I thought, you absolute lunatic. One pound thirty for washing two cars every Sunday. How old? How old, how old, how old? <laughs> 13, I think. I'd go around Loughton and say, go wash your car, go wash your car, go wash your car. Good on you. I don't think I was any good at it. They went away on holiday. They said, we're going away on holiday, we don't need you. We'll call you when we want you to come, and they never called me back. No. I never thing. wanted to have a job. No. I've had a vague idea that I'd quite like to be a football reporter, mm. because I couldn't be a footballer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then I did a media course at the local college, with half an eye on that, and they did drama. And that's what you've always course, done this. And never that had a real was it job. for when I was 16. I thought, oh, yes, I'll do drama. I like drama. I wanted to be an astronaut or a snooker player. Nice. Can't really do snooker in space, can you, yeah. with, all the, <laughs> with all the floating balls? Yeah. <laughs> My first proper pay job, Mersey Marth delivering the free local, you know, paper. 1.2 pence per paper, I remember it being. Wow. And you get them, and, like, a, ro a, a row of houses where no one had a front garden was easy money. But then you go to the roads where everyone had these long paths, and you were like, oh, 1.2 pence to go all the way up and there and back again. <laughs> But I remember when I, when I first started doing stand-up in 2003, um, like, literally within, like, eight, nine months, I won a couple of competitions, and I ended up featured in the Mersey Mart, which I used to deliver. <laughs> and I expected it, like, to be somewhere hidden within the paper. And I always remember that, my mum going, oh, we've got the paper, you're in it. She goes, you're on the front page. I was like, oh, my goodness, I'm on the... I've made the front page of the Mersey Mart. She goes, you're the second story. So, like, instantly, like, I was happy with being on page eight or nine, but now you want to know what, what's the story that's <laughs> yeah, knocked me from the top spot <laughs> of the Mersey Mart. Do you know what it was? I remember it to this day. Wheelie Bin Barricade on Alliford Road. <laughs> 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 I was second fiddle to a wheelie bin barricade. I mean, that shit does sound cool. It sounded like yeah. something was kicking off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A wheelie yeah. bin barricade. Yeah, what like was what? going over on Alifid Road? It, it, what it was is there was some kind of um, works going on on the main road, and the residents weren't happy with the cars being diverted down Alifid Road, a back street residential road, and so they decided to take action into their own hands. I mean, it's all in the title. They barricaded yeah. it with the wind. The rest is history. Yeah. Yeah, and then I was, um, I was a footnote on the page. You know, you're good, but you're no wheelie bin oh, barricade. Oh, no wheelie bin barricade. <laughs> oh, I love it. I remember the first time I wanted money. I never wanted to ask Mum for money. Never, ever, ever. So we was like, oh, how are we going to get this money? Because I wanted Panini football stickers. And a cousin, he's not with us anymore. We was like, how'd you, how'd you even get money? How'd you get it? This is a job, you're gonna have a job at six, seven, how'd you even get money? He goes, well, you gotta get something for as cheap as you can and then sell it for as expensive as you can. And then what that turned into is, oh, if you just, if you rob stuff, that's the cheapest you can get it's it, the right? right? It's the cheapest, you can get anything it's other than that profit. And I remember, I must have been like seven, eight, and we started robbing Parker pens, because they seemed like the most expensive cool. thing, innit? Yeah, yeah. So we started robbing Parker pens, and then the problem was, well, it, who was going to sell these to? And other kids didn't have money, so I remember the first few Parker pens we sold for, like, 12p, or swapped it for a donut. You know what I mean? But it just... <laughs> <laughs> but other pens are available. Was it always Parker's goods? That's Biros? Where the, that's where the... No, no one wants to shit Biro. Mountain pens, Get Parker's, every... highlighters. Parker fans, Parker yeah. ball pens, that's the sweet spot. I would say it's the cocaine of the pen world. <sighs> Put a kettle on. David! <laughs> Set us a badge. My wife and I, our first date was to Walthamstow Dogs. 
Nice. <laughs> was it? Yeah. But our car at the time had faulty uh, central locking mechanism. And uh, we parked under the flyover in Walthamstow and then couldn't get out of the car. And she really, that, for her, that appeared to be a very bad date. Did she think you'd sort of engineered this sort of locker in a car vibe? Can I ask you what um, brand of vehicle that was? It's an uh, Alfa Romeo. It's like a wingman, the Alfa Romeo. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> park her up. <laughs> no, 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 don't leave yet, don't do you leave wanna, yet. Uh, do you want to get out now or <laughs> yeah. give me the nudge? I love that car, two and a half turns lock to lock. <laughs> wow. That's one for them petrol heads watching, both of them. I know. <laughs> it's funny, I remember having the highest pair of heels on one of, like, maybe, like, second date with my husband. And I said, I didn't want to admit it, but I sort of went, oh, do you know what? <laughs> we were walking from the restaurant to a bar then, and I said, look, I've... I'm going to change my shoes. I couldn't. I couldn't even pretend I could walk in them. Like, and I went, I've got some flats in my bag. And he went, It's okay. I've got some heels in mine. <laughs> and I just thought, oh, I like you. <laughs> that was, that was good, a good little line, that. Did a gig once, and um, I was, and the, the it was an eclectic bill. I was the only person doing stand up. Oh. And the um, the person hosting it was an, was an escapologist, and he got in a box and then couldn't get himself out the box. Was the it Alfa Romeo? He, he, <laughs> he, he was in a box on the stage, and he got in the box, and he was in the box for so long that everyone got up and just started milling around and doing their own thing. And then by the time he got himself out the box, he was so desperate to get off the stage, he just introduced me to a room of people that had all decided that the evening was over and were doing their own thing. Oh. After me were, like, girls, dancers, who were, like, all in bikinis with bits stuck on them. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, introduced by a bloke in a box to dye my arse in front of bikini girls. Never get introduced by a bloke who spent five minutes in a box. <laughs> That's it. It's not, the, it's not the heckles or the actor, if they actively hate you, it's the absolute couldn't care less if you're on the stage or not. It did happen to me, but I was there, and it was in Newcastle, and it was in a, it was like a community-based stand-up gig, but we we're all quite rude, yeah. It was all lads, and everyone's just trying to impress each other, yeah. And then one of the comedians who was with us went out on stage, and he's just doing crowd work, and he says to the guy, oh, "What do you do?" And he's gone, "I'm a mechanic." And so he said to the fella's missus, because he was a mechanic, he's got a big spanner or a little spanner. And then people are giggling, and then his wife has done him dirty and said, a tiny spanner. <laughs> then he's left the room, he looked very angry. Oh, he the tiny the spanner man. Yeah, tiny spanner man left the room. Gig's gone on, everyone's having a good time. And then the next thing, all we heard was bang! And then the lad who did the joke went, ah! Oh! And he's come back in and he threw an alternator at him. <laughs> An alternator. <laughs> yeah, he must have got it from his boot. <laughs> and he dashed the alternator at the guy. And then there was about a 50-man fight. So I don't think that's a very wow. good gig. No, that's a terrible gig. Oh, my gig. God. What, what, what's an alternator? It's like a, a very important mechanism to begin the car. It holds charge, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's good it's if you get it in your hand. Oh, God. Yeah, it's There's a lump of metal that you could throw. Oh, my God. It's a bit bigger than a cricket ball, would you say? Yeah. Good name for a film, though, isn't it? Like The alternator. The alternator. <laughs> <laughs> you... He's a man on the edge. <laughs> I see he must have been in the car. Get it? Dashed it at him. Absolutely fucked his hip. It wasn't him who said he had a small spanner, it was his wife. I would pre I preferred that he threw it at him instead of his wife. Well, that would have been terrible. What do you want, if he'd have come back in and thrown the alternator at his wife's head. Yeah, he couldn't do that. Yeah. I'm furious about this small spanner insult. Yeah, my worst gig was very recently, actually, a polo club. Polo, you know, in case you wondered if I keep it real, a polo <laughs> club <laughs> summer ball. And the woman who booked me was lovely. She'd seen me do a gig and she wanted me and, and all that. But you know when you get early to a gig and, I, I, you know, we like the green room, but obviously you want to read the room. It was all ponies. <laughs> all yeah. ponies and mallets. <laughs> I didn't know what they were into. <laughs> there was, it was India versus England, and the Indian team had won it, and they were all really lovely. So I'd sat on the Indian lads team, and they were really up for some bants as well. Yeah, they were. So that it. was nice. I'd made a joke about, you know, how wealthy they were, and I said, these bastards 
they've put me on the catering staff table and they loved that because they were uber wealthy guys. One of them said he's in construction, this, this guy. And I said, oh, so is my husband. I said, what do you do? He goes, oh, my family build holiday resorts. What about your husband? I said, patios. <laughs> so I did tell that joke on stage. <laughs> but after that, <laughs> my knowledge of the polo world, I had nothing. I had nothing. I mean, and they didn't care about my menopause. They didn't care about anything, really. So it was, a, it was an excruciating half hour. Half they were lovely, hour. but it was excruciating. Ultra posh people don't go through the menopause. They, they outsource it, don't they? They don't, know. They, they get in a woman for they that. Do. You yeah. get a surrogate menopausal yeah, person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I broke my collarbone. Yeah. I think I was about four or five. That's well, I think that's my first memory, really. How did you And we it? had a little slope in our back garden, and I had a little truck thing, I went over the top and down the slope and fell off. And I was delighted to be told I had a broken collarbone. And there's nothing they can do about it. You can't put a cast on it or anything. You, know, you just said very casually, oh, I broke my collarbone, they sent me home. Get on with it, yeah? <laughs> Let's have a good time. Remember my... <laughs> he used to call, my uncle broke his collarbone. And he, all the way to the hospital, he's saying things like, when I'm not here, just my money is under the table here. <laughs> He's gonna, we all, he's gonna die. He's writing his will. Yeah, he's writing his will. He's being serious about it. And then we got a hospital. Yeah. Got a hospital, and he said, the nurse said, they checked in. They're like, there's nothing we can really do. He said, nothing you can do. <laughs> You're gonna leave me to die. <laughs> My colour is broken. <laughs> You're going to leave me to die. <laughs> they escorted us out of the hospital, and all the way home, he said, they send me home to die. <laughs> I'm going to die. He didn't die, but he did lie in bed for three weeks. <laughs> You guys just take it in your stride. We're very serious about that stuff. But then I <laughs> fell off a climbing frame when I was about eight. Oh. And I broke my wrist. Jesus. Hanging upside down on the climbing frame, which is a very popular thing to do a big, amongst huge, the kids. Huge, huge. We didn't have any of that soft landing area. It's like a spongy tarmac now. Yeah, that's it. Didn't have that. No. And that broke, and I was told I was very brave for not crying. A lot of emphasis placed on not crying yeah. in the 70s. And the dinner ladies, because the dinner ladies run in with the first aid. One of them gave me a pen that she had where if you tilted it and a little... I think it was um, a cable car. She must have got it from a resort with a cable car in. Mm -hmm. Slid down like that. She said you can have that for being brave. But you couldn't write with it, it had no ink in it. <laughs> and you just broke your arm. My middle child got, like, um chicken pox at Christmas. So, you know, standing on a stool getting calamine lotion. She'd won Christmas, basically. Do you know what I mean? She'd won. I've won Christmas. <laughs> and when her brother got it three weeks later, she took it personally. So that, that was my thing. That was my thing, getting all the attention for the chicken pox, thanks. Well, when we had chicken pox, my mum... So I don't have many memories of my mum, but I do remember that. She put all of us in one room. That was, that was the policy. What a good idea. All I really three of you get chicken pox right now. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's the way you do it. Americans yeah. have chicken pox parties, don't they? Yeah. So, so, so it all runs through them you at the want, same you, time. You want to have it at some point. Yeah. yeah. And you have it better to have it young. Yeah. And yeah. as a parent, dealing with three kids with chicken pox is not three times worse than one kid with chicken pox, is it? No, it's they're just... all in one room at least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> threw you in there, threw yeah. a bottle of calamine just, lotion, locked the door. Wrote pox on the door in chalk. <laughs> 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 Old school. <laughs> Anyone seen David? I don't think David had a childhood. I feel like either he didn't have a childhood or this is his childhood, it's just extended. Yeah, he was born in brogues and a shirt. He's one of those kids that took a briefcase to school, isn't he? A hundred percent. He probably dealt with kids. He has got a sort of country doctor vibe, hasn't he? He probably dealt with the kids in the playground that had hurt themselves. No noise. He's halfway between an adult and a child. Yeah. I, I get a vibe he doesn't like conkers, and that stresses me out a bit. Doesn't like conkers? Yeah, I don't think... I think when we all be like, yeah, bang, he would be like, stop that. How good was your best conker? Oh, it's fuck, like a, it was like a, the size of an Alfa Romeo. It's fucking <laughs> massive. Yeah. Best one I ever found, yeah. Fell out like, fell like a tree, made a big hole in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> size of an alternator. <laughs> <laughs> Swing it. it was. That's it. <laughs> that's the real thing. It was the size of a healthy alpha. Yeah, it was. It was good. It's the best part of an alpha. 